Mm-hmm. And there was, when we were shooting, there was a lot of ad lib too that wasn't even in the yeah, original script. Some. Okay, so let's get into that. What do you guys remember from the shooting? Oh, well, that sounds morbid. What do you guys remember <laughs> from shooting this? <laughs> Is all that I will ever do. All right, welcome back to hey. Filmmakers, Filmmakers Making Film. I'll get it one of these times. <laughs> Filmmakers Making Film. This is part two. Okay, so last episode we just talked about uh, the first, you know, that first video that we did yep. for We Are One, sort of a 10 years, you know, a big picture view of sort of metaphorically what has happened over 10 years. And then we did a sketch of our own for this same conference for the same thing that this other piece aired mm-hmm. for. But this was like very open-ended. Like the other yeah. one was like they had a specific vision and structure. It was really their piece they were going to produce and that's two different this is like i think that's even something we can highlight for a second this is what it feels like when you're creating anything there are two different ways to create there is client work and there is pet projects there is like okay this is what they want this is at least the arc that they need this is at least the tone that they want this is the style the client wants and that's sort of the parameters and to a certain extent that's some that's easier and it's harder it's easier in the sense that it's like okay it's sort of like we've defined the relationship coming in I know what to expect. I know not to come in expecting. You know, I'm not. I know not to come in with delusions of grandeur, right. thinking that I'm going to be able to do this crazy thing because it's probably not going to be exactly what they want. Even though they would probably, for the most part, let us do whatever we want. But there was way more stipulations than when we're just like literally. What they told us was, we want you guys to do a sketch about X marks the spot. Mm-hmm. That was literally it. Yep. <laughs> and then we went. I think I was in the shower and I was like, X marks the spot. <laughs> what if your X mark? was the spot which is huge spoiler if you didn't already watch it (laughs) so it's up in the top right corner right now make sure you go watch Mm -hmm. it if you haven't already watched it but it was just like okay how do we communicate this dumb pun of like instead of x marks the spot your x mark is the spot and then where did we go from there what was what was the next step we started talking through the writing Mm -hmm. i started i think i went and just wrote yeah i think i wrote like a page of it yeah and it was kind of trash because the init actually the initial sketch that i wrote down i found the other day was like it was like us as brothers and sisters same concept Mm -hmm. but like our dad had given us a treasure map yeah it was more and we're like digging it up elaborate i think we're like digging it up and then we go and dig it up and when we uncover it it's like a bomb it was like something absurd of course it's always a bomb yeah but it was always a bomb but this was the conversation we had it was like we need something and maybe that's just like my like screenwriting tech. That's my word for it. Is like the server explosion. It was actually a bomb. But in every story, you need a bomb. In every story, you need the thing that's like creating imminent danger. That's mm-hmm. creating conflict that will eventually be able to create either disaster or relief. Mm-hmm. It's like either this thing's going to get diffused and we're all okay, or everyone needs to die. Like those are pretty much your options. Yep. And so we uncover something it's starting, you know, start, start some sort of digression, sort of starts a, mm-hmm. a countdown, starts a timer or something like that. And it just always, it just felt weird. It, I didn't love it. And it, I think because it wasn't immediately funny, I wanted, this had two, two jokes for me. There was the, three jokes actually. There was the X mark being the spot. Like there was the play on the words, which yeah. I love. Mm-hmm. There was the pun. And then there was what we'll, get into in a bit what we affectionately call the donkey kick Mm -hmm. and then there was the (laughs) reversal of like oh she made the whole thing up yeah like those were sort of the three acts of the joke um so let's just get into you know let's just go from there anybody else's thoughts on just like the writing the construction of it let's not get into the shoot quite yet but like the actual like pre-production process was that just me was i on my own on this one i feel like we talked about it a couple times we did. We had a couple of meetings. Uh, you had brought, we, we like talked about it. And then one day you just brought a script to the table. Because yeah. you had like been inspired that morning and kind of wrote the whole thing out. I think out. that's when I had the whole, her ex mark. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, this is so funny, right? <laughs> and then the room just sort of is like, uh-huh. Was I there for that? Yeah. You're you usually were. not. I'm usually not there. You That's were why physically I can never. There, <laughs> you were physically there. Are you sure? Yeah. So you I don't were. remember that moment. Yeah. I, well, I would, yeah, I we would remember right, this. Read it. We read. You would. I mean, Chris Redneck. It's just it's always, the there. Amen, it's always there. Amen, brother. Always there. Okay, but anyways, I brought the the script, yeah. and I had written a rough 
outline or a rough page or two. Yeah. And we cold read it for them. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. I so we, that. I, cause I, yep. I wanted to see if the joke would be clear and if it would land. Yeah. Cause there was like my two favorite jokes were he told the whole cafeteria that you pooped the bed. I did poop the bed. Yeah, but it wasn't their business. Not. What was the, the original line was, I did poop the bed. Yeah, but it wasn't their business. You're right. That was the original yeah. joke. And that's where we sort of tweaked it to, that's not their business. Not their business. Mm -hmm. I think that was one of your guys' ideas, actually. I mean, yours? Maybe. I don't know. Tweaked it a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, I want to just read it cold. And I gave you the script. I sent it to you. I was like, just let's just read it. Yeah. Because that for me, so anytime I have an audience for anything, I, I always make sure I use it. So anytime we play a video to a crowd, even if I'm backstage, I will stand as close to the crowd as I can. I will literally mm -hmm. stand at the curtain and I will stand there with my ear yeah. facing out. And I get literally as close. I even will often pull the curtain back to be able to listen and watch if I can, because I want to know every nuanced detail of what they're responding to, mm -hmm. because it's not enough for you to think something's funny only valid entertainment it only has value in in creative spaces or the entertainment industry or whatever it is you're trying to break into like you might think your woodworking is fantastic but if nobody's willing to pay for it it's right. a great hobby right you know what i mean and the difference between something being a hobby and something being a profession is that professionals can reproduce at a level that will always elicit the same results hobbyists can do it in a way that they will always enjoy it mm -hmm. and i think for me i'm always Anything that has jokes in it, especially if it's like emotional or inspirational, I, I can pretty much always tell you what's going to land and what's going to not. Sketches are so, comedy is so hard, but sketches are so hard because comedy in general is like, this person's going to think it's funny. This person's not going to get it. This person's going to find it offensive. Like that's literally <laughs> yeah. your odds. Yeah. yeah. This person won't even click it because it's not even interesting, you know, the thumbnail version of it. And so I'm always wanting to listen and go, okay, like, what was the reaction? Did they yeah. get the joke? Did it land? It's like, oh, that fell flat. Was it not, what, was it a technical thing? Was it not loud enough? Did the, did the line not come through? Mm -hmm. Did we not was add the, enough space at the end of the Was there not line? enough space yeah. where they could really hear the line before it? Like, that's, there's so many pacing things in comedy where, that you're constantly sorting through. And so that's why I wanted to do the cold read. I was like, mm -hmm. just without no context, let's just read it. Yeah. You and I read it and we're going to perform it for them. And so we literally just acted it out dry. You know, she, she was dry. I, I had obviously written it. So <laughs> I had no idea you, what I was you, you had no idea what, what you're getting into. <laughs> yeah. We just read it. And my whole intent with that was, do they get, like, do they understand the point? Right. Do they get the pun that this is your X mark and he's the spot? Yeah. Like, is that clear? And then past that, if that's clear and it's not funny, it's not <laughs> worth it. Is that clear? Yeah. And is that comedy? Like those were kind of the two questions. And so we go through it and I feel like it was overall a decent reaction. And it's yeah. like, okay, this is the part. Yeah. I knew immediately I needed to tweak this. I knew immediately this wasn't going to work. I knew immediately. Um, I think we, we, all, we all got the X mark part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the part that I didn't get at first was that she had made the whole thing up, but you did tweak the ending to make yeah, that more it, clear. And I had written it Yeah. and she didn't make the whole thing up. I wrote the whole oh, thing that without is her. True. That's true. And then without her making that up, they were both just scared. Mm -hmm. And then it was, I reversed the whole thing where at first when I wrote it, and this is part of what you're doing when you're sort of structuring the story. When I first wrote it, my character was gung ho. I was like, let's go, let's go get him. And you were like, no, that's my ex. And you were afraid. And I was like, you're going to let an awkward emotional situation keep you from a $10,000 prize. There was like high stakes yeah. when we initially wrote it. And then at the end, I was like, what if she like was faking the whole thing and mm -hmm. she made it up? I was like, that's funny. So then I wrote that in, but I didn't rewrite the whole thing from the top. Mm -hmm. So it really went back to the top and I was like, gung ho, but then you tricked me and it's like, it didn't make sense. Yeah. So then it required once we landed on, okay, we like the idea that it's a role, it's a reversal. Like she was manipulating the whole thing. Then it required a, a top to bottom rewrite, mm -hmm. not necessarily of all the lines, but many nuances in the lines to make sure my character became this sort of sissy. Mm -hmm. You were the sort of one that was actually gung ho, yeah. but you didn't want to have to do it. You're a hands off manipulative leader. You're actually a dictator <laughs> and you wanted to try to get the, the scared sort of peasant people. So then my lines transitioned from you're being a sissy to you're not going either. Yeah, but I'm a sissy and we both knew that going in. You know what uh -huh. I mean? My sort of the etymology of my character shifted yeah. 180 degrees yeah. and then we had to rewrite from the ground up. Yeah, because by the time you got, you gave the script, you had 
at that, because you said when you gave the script, you said I changed something at the ending, but it doesn't work with the things on top, so just bear yeah. with it. So you had, you had already had that switch, so I think that's maybe part of why I didn't get it right away. But then we even tweaked the lines at the end to make sure that that point came across clear. Mm -hmm. And there was, when we were shooting, there was a lot of ad lib too that wasn't even in the yeah, original script. Some. Okay, so let's get into that. What do you guys remember from the shooting? Oh, that sounds morbid. What do you guys remember <laughs> from shooting this? <laughs> well, I remember, I don't know if I entirely remember the first day. Well, uh, they all kind of I definitely blur. remember they all, the first yeah. day. What was the first day when you smashed a, your shin? Yes. When you smashed, yeah. Okay. I remember that day. So do we have the footage of that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We have I should. Let's throw yeah. that in. Take five. Here we go. Three, two, and action. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Where <laughs> what did he just do? That hurt. <laughs> that looked like it hurt. Oh, it felt great. Is that your kneecap? <laughs> no, thankfully, it was not my kneecap because the knee had been having so much pain. Oh, I think the knee would have felt better than the shin. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Wow. Here's a second. Whew. All good. right. Yeah, so Miranda goes to run out. And then when she goes. It's my tight stuff. Yeah, so we were mm -hmm. just shooting. Like, we're actually holed up against this, like, Fallen apart, janky, Sketch. sketchy picnic table Found out it the behind day the barn. We were gonna shoot. Yeah. yeah, it's like back behind the studio, and it's like a bunch of the seats are smashed in half, so it's just like raw, jagged plastic. And then I <laughs> smashed one of the seats. It's like tetanus Again. town, and you <laughs> ran around, and then when you came back, she just like beamed. yeah, because I had to run into the scene and sit down fast, so I came around, around the corner and did not. Depth perception was not in my favor that day, and I smoked that thing so hard. She, with she my, looked like Lindsay on like, a pickleball court. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Shots fired. <laughs> but it's like usually like I can like I can muster through pain. It's not a big deal. I can I can be like yeah, let's just keep going. And I like I think like I stopped, and you were like, "Are you good?" And I was like, "No, I need a minute." <laughs> it hurts so I mean, bad. Yeah. Next day or two, I mean, it was bright blue and black <laughs> Nasty. it was bleeding yeah. i think like yeah, it, it swelled a quite a bit like it was pretty gnarly it's still mm. it's, it, i feel it it's still there yeah i mean it was it's painful so like I, I was sitting there and it hurt me <laughs> when i heard it oh. i was like oh i know that hurt yeah oh, so hurt. you actually were a good sport about it you muscled through <laughs> so then that was day one right yeah that was day one of shooting okay so what happened why do we keep saying day one anybody want to explain this so what happened which how long should this have taken an Half afternoon a day. An yeah. afternoon. <laughs> this should have been a. I mean, if we if we take into consideration the visual effect shots that we knew we had planned, the sure. donkey kick, sure. which we'll talk about in a sec, the donkey kick in and of itself, I knew was going to be a couple hours. So it was yeah. probably a. It could have been like a nine. Probably a, a to six. Sundown. It was probably a six-hour shoot. Yeah. Like probably eight hours is us performing very slowly. Yes. Mm -hmm. What were some of the challenges we ran into? Weather was a part of it. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, well, it was so to speak annoying. To that. It was so annoying because it was like we had to, we had to wait so many times for the sun, and then we ended up shooting half of it in the shade because we didn't have sun, and then then we had shade, so then we had to blast the three hundred at the side of your head mm -hmm. and your head to so make you, it look like. And sun. you can actually see it in the cut. I mean, it's yeah. definitely transitioning back attention. and forth between oh, yeah. shade and bright sunlight. There's like. There's one part in the cut where it goes from a wide and then into a tight for like three <laughs> seconds and then back out to a wide and it's like blasting you sun in the second the second wide and the first wide it's totally shady. And so this oh. is sort of what's interesting when you take into sort of consideration how a team works when you start to compartmentalize a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Miranda cut this. Miranda edited this. You did selects, I think, on it and sort of pulled it and did the rough cut. And Lindsay and I did yeah. selects. Yeah, you guys, you guys sort of did a rough cut together and then Miranda took over and sort of that's mm -hmm kind of her niche, what she's really good at. What he's good at and where he sort of sits in that pocket is lighting, cameras, lenses, you know, like sort of all of the cinematography, directing photography, all that kind of stuff. So what he's frustrated by when he's watching the cutback <laughs> is, oh, that just went from bright to diffused and shadowed back to bright. Yeah. And like, he know, and I noticed it too. I watched it and I was like, Ugh! Because I for so I don't so even like have the time notice. I'm just I like, oh, this is a great so take. So long though, <laughs> no, did all not, of those though. things by myself. Yeah, I had to figure out what's a good take, figure out how to shoot it, figure out how to light it, figure out how to act in it. You know what I mean? Like I did all of those things on my own. So like, that is still I I have that director photography in mm -hmm. me sometimes where I'm like, Ugh! Ugh! but when we, when I train an editor and even in Hollywood, 
you'll notice this in your favorite like Hollywood movie Mm -hmm. where it's like they're doing this take and it's like, so where'd you hide the money? And it cuts back to the other guy's reaction and it comes back and it's like, but is the money still there? (laughs) And then it comes back and cuts the other guy and there's half the bottle missing. He's like, but give me the money, right? Because what the editor is trained to do is what we would do, what we would call those is continuity errors. Mm -hmm. Continuity is the bottle continuously stays here. This amount gets refilled back up every time he uses a certain amount. The cap stays on it because that's how he started unless it's actually part of the scene where he takes it off and sets it there, at which point a continuity, you know, super, uh, a script supervisor would actually try to make sure the team fills it back up. And you're watching that. So it stays continuous feeling. There's a, there's a fluidity to the, to the movement of all the blocking, all the props and everything. Huh? You said good word. No, I said, oh. well, you were like <laughs> water. some water over there. <laughs> um, and, and so when you, when you're editing, your thought process is I'm going for the best performance. Yes. Mm. I'm thinking through what is the best way to get out yeah. the emotional impact that this scene was intended, written, shot, directed, purposed to do. And so Miranda, when she says, I don't even pay attention, like, I don't even notice that. I don't yeah. even pay attention. You know, not that you don't always. There's definitely some continuity mistakes we've made that are. Yeah. My mom pointed some out. Like, like, like the Starbucks actually. cup in that Game of Thrones episode. Mm. I saw the internet explode over that. Yeah. Never seen it. But it's like literally they left a Starbucks cup in the middle of whatever they call it. What? It's not Middle Earth. It's, it's I don't um. know. I've never seen it. But they left like a literal Starbucks <laughs> cup and it doesn't make any sense. It's not part of the, the world they built or anything. Yeah. Mm. That is a huge continuity mistake that an editor, I mean an editor and a visual effects supervisor and a director and a producer and an executive producer and a whole, whole bunch of people passed that so shot off before it got to TV. That. That's the yeah. part that is kind of mind numbing. <laughs> but for us, uh, it's really easy. His perspective is going to be like keeping lighting. That's why he does the grade because yeah. the, the color grade is trying to fake that, make sure the lighting feels consistent, mm-hmm. even if it wasn't consistent. Yeah. And sometimes like with shots like that, you just can't, like I can't. No, but I can't skin fake. tones are the most important part. Right. As long as you right. can get the skin to feel right. Yeah, but it, I mean, I can't fake sun blasting you in the side of the head and then yeah. sun not yeah. blasting you. I mean, I probably could, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't feel right. It, it's funny yeah. too with the, because I think for me, being trained in that way, it always look for the best performance and what's going to tell the story best. I'm not like, like continuity is kind of one of the first things to go because I do feel like your audience is more forgiving of a continuity error than they are a bad performance. Always. That's why they train them that way. Right. It's like mm-hmm. if your acting is atrocious, they're going to go, oh, this doesn't feel human. Yeah. If there's, a, if there's less water in the bottle, A, that's not where I'm looking. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, I'm looking you in the eyes. Yeah. If there's a human in front of me, I am trained from the time I'm a small child into adulthood to look people in the eyes. And that is where I'm going to experience their emotion. Mm-hmm. That is where I'm going to experience their meaning. You know, you can say like, you can say some sarcastic comment and it, it means the reverse of what you just said. But I know that because I'm watching your face as you delivered it. Right, right. And so that's what I'm, as a human doing, is I'm staring you in the eyes and I'm delineating sort of all of your emotional response through mm-hmm. this sort of window to the soul. So I hopefully will bypass the mistake that got made with the water. Yeah. But the goal is on set that this also is done right too. So I don't have to choose between those because they still are noticeable. Every one of your favorite movies still has other than like literally Pixar movies. That's sort of the fascination with something animated is if it's in the scene, (laughs) if it's in the scene, they put it there on purpose, which means they're probably not going to do that unintentionally. Right. Um, Okay. So then we got to day two. Why did it take it? So we started with weather. That was one of the variables, but what was the ultimate reason we kept shooting? Like, why did it take us so long? We shot into day two because well, we didn't finish. we didn't finish. We didn't, well, we had I mean we had a lot of other things going on too. So yeah, we it was were a, yeah. crunched we for busy. time. To we begin kept having with. to finish yeah. at a certain time, but then we go into day two and we finally finished it up. And even then, it was like okay, we sort of spent two afternoons on it. And right. It was like okay, that this should have been done by now. Other than the donkey kick, we still didn't get to the donkey kick at that point. Yeah. And at that point, I think we assembled the cut. We made the first rough mm-hmm. cut and mm-hmm. sort of. Even that morning, yeah. going into nut yeah. to the second shoot, we assembled the rough cut, and the second day of shooting was sort of an attempt of, let's finish this chunk, and let's also tweak some of these lines and reshoot these parts mm-hmm. that didn't quite come across. Mm-hmm. They didn't feel right in the edit. Yeah. So then we did those, 
And then we had to think, I, th- I think, take a day off because we had to move on to other stuff the next day. And then we go on the Thursday to try and finish it up. And it was like, okay, this stuff still doesn't feel right in the cut. <laughs> Nothing is working. So let's rewrite yeah. these jokes. And yeah. then it became down to, okay, let's rewrite these jokes and let's completely reshoot these chunks. I'm trying to remember what stuff we specifically, I may remember what we specifically reshot. The opening shot we reshot. But like mm-hmm. actual that was joke, technically that was that, that was, was technically yeah that felt oh, the jokes that we, felt awkward because of the the frame up. Well, but, the yeah. jokes aren't there that we reshot. Well, yeah, but, but but why did we reshoot those jokes in the first place? To and what did we tr- change them to and from? Do you remember? Oh, there was a it lot was of- to capitalize on how I spoke. That's what that was what sparked it because I said, um, "Okay, you're up," and it sounds oh, like yeah. you're so up. So like it was yeah. That was a replacement of some other joke that we felt like was falling flat. Yeah. And so she's like, okay, you're up. And I'm like, America. She goes, no, you're up. I go, America, ladies first. And it was like, it was fine. It's like a little chuckle. Even now she like hears it again. It was, was, I don't know if it was funny. It was fine. (laughs) It was fine. fine. But what we, what we found we were doing is we spent the first 30, 45 seconds, maybe minute of the sketch. And we had a limited amount of time. We had four minutes. We had to fit this whole thing in under four minutes. Like that was our time frame. Yeah. Mm. And I think the final sketch still ended up being nigh four minutes. It was like 340 or something like that without yeah. the end screens on YouTube. And so we already were felt pressed for time, but I think we could have fit it. It was just like, as we were processing all those jokes in the beginning, what was happening is we were trying to establish a story and then establish some humor and then come back to the story and then finish the story via the humor it was like we were trying to like we spent the first 30 seconds or 45 seconds just establishing frivolous jokes yeah we were trying too hard to set up the why that we were trying to set up the why we were trying to establish what they were doing and i honestly feel like that is still in cutting out all of those jokes to make it paste better we cut out a lot of what the heck they're doing yeah and that's why like your parents didn't get it when they watched no, it. Like, not at all. <laughs> outside of the context of what it was played for, it doesn't make a ton of sense. It, it is, it's, it's overall fine. I think the jokes yeah. still land, yeah. but it's not as clear as it could be. So if I'm doing a scene in a movie, um, take comedy. Uh, if I'm doing a scene, I'm trying to take you from point A to point B. That's the scene. I'm trying to establish emotional response, changing it either from positive to negative or negative to positive. So if you come in happy, you need to leave sad. If you come in sad, you need to have brightened your day mm-hmm. throughout the scene. I'm taking you on a small piece of the journey over the course of that two or three minutes. With a sketch, all I'm doing, you know, like, what's a joke? You know, why, why did, what's a, what's a a joke I just heard? I just heard a a dumb joke the other day. Uh, Well, what's Bob's joke that he always says, actually? You know what I'm talking about? There's there's one joke that he always does. (laughs) Or I just heard, what's better, earth rocks or moon rocks? Moon rocks because they're meteor, right? So a sketch, you're spending three minutes doing this. What's better, earth rocks or moon rocks? And then in the last like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, Mm -hmm. what you're trying to do is go moon rocks because they're meteor. The sketch, I have to look at it from a totally different perspective. Mm -hmm. I need to get in some sort of emotional change, positive and negative or negative to positive. That's the goal is still to have some sort of discernible character arc. But the overarching goal of what you're doing in a sketch is you're literally just trying to set up a punchline yeah. and then punch it at the end and you go to black. Yeah. Boogeyman was like establishing this whole world where this adult child is sleeping in, you know, in his new bed for the first time in his mom's house and he's terrified of the boogeyman and then the boogeyman comes up and he's terrified and we're setting up the joke and that whole thing is literally just, what's better, earth rocks or moon rocks? And then it goes... Give me them boogies. And that's just (laughs) meteor smashed to black. (laughs) And so what we ended up finding is as we were trying to, we were trying to create a short film Mm -hmm. in the context of a sketch. Mm -hmm. And a sketch and a short film, as much as they share a lot of similarities, a sketch, your goal is just, let's bring me, just just set up a joke and just punch the joke. Surprise me at the end and make me go, (laughs) that was good. I didn't see that coming. Mm -hmm move on yeah where a short film is like take me on an emotional journey and we were sort of trying to write from that perspective we were trying to build this journey and it was actually deviating from now they were losing track of what the joke was Mm -hmm. the joke was i'm on a treasure hunt the spot the x marks the spot is my x mark he's the spot 
I'm going to get this guy. And it wasn't, it was actually all a lie. Like that was the progression of the joke and everything else was deviating from that. And so we shot and then we reshot and then we tested it and we watched the footage and we watched the cut and it didn't work. So then we reshot and then we reshot probably two or three times. And then we came back to it and finally I watched it and I was like, nope, just cut it. (laughs) Just cut it. We cut out like 30, 45 seconds, something like that. We cut out this whole intro, pretty much everything we said to each other in the beginning. Yep. We're like, just get rid of it, get to the joke, get to the point quicker and just hope that the joke is funny enough that it actually like lands, which for your parents, it at least didn't. My mom, I mean, my mom didn't got, get it, but she said it was funny. She I'll take know, it. She doesn't know the context, but she actually laughed, which is I'll not, take it. I feel like that's not like my I, parents. I was surprised. So let's end with, we'll end with the donkey kick. I was surprised at the in-person reaction we got because we, we played this for the first time to a, to a, a good yeah. sized crowd. It wasn't straight to YouTube. I was surprised at the reaction the donkey kick got. I kind of expected the oh chuckle at X marks the spot. Uh-huh. My X marks the spot. And I expected nobody even, honestly, I figured the donkey kick would happen so fast. They wouldn't even notice entirely what happened. Yeah. And they watched, they like when that happened, the crowd actually went kind of nuts. And I was they like, oh, roared. that actually like that was landed. so funny. Yeah. yeah. I, it landed super well. And I was very surprised. Yeah. That's cool. I wasn't that, in the room. I <laughs> love that too. I love like, cause you, you know, going straight to YouTube, you don't really get, you don't get to experience those opportunities it. like ever. So when you mm-hmm. get them, it's like. It's precious. Yeah. And I was like, that's why I was, I was paying attention. All of a sudden I was like, Oh, that joke worked. I was kind of surprised. Mm -hmm. And then obviously they cheered at the end because it was like the merch was something that was like pertinent and made sense to them in that moment. But so we go to do that. We'll, we'll end with this, these couple stories. So you get hurt day one. (laughs) We ended, this would have been like day three because we had one. I wasn't there for either one of yours. So it would have been day three. Yeah, it would have she been day three because it was Thursday. Oh, yeah. You guys to, both we were, were gone. Both so days. that's our problem yeah. is our safety supervisor was gone. <laughs> and everybody gets hurt. Yeah. Yeah. So I go. Uh, I got hurt and you were so there. Yeah, I basically true. had him do the way we shot that. Maybe we can show footage of this. He just jumped up and toe touched on a green screen million times yeah <laughs> probably 10 times so i could use two it was 20 times because we did it twice. Oh, yeah, like 30 times actually 30 times it was a lot wow. it was genuinely a lot yeah we had to do it a ton and i think i used two of them yeah it, it was fun i liked it i liked the yeah, way it looked honestly, so just... <laughs> it kind of was fun okay so what was that did you actually let's take it this did you enjoy acting yeah i did think, you think that was fun yeah doing those stupid <laughs> things like that things because there's hunters. no pressure on me i could just be myself <laughs> yeah it's better yeah it was dumb stuff it like that fun. always ends up with a bunch of inside jokes for us <laughs> so we do this uh you know like we sort of needed to end with shooting you getting donkey kicked yeah. across the the field yeah which was kind mm-hmm. of i think i have eight or ten hours into that two second shot oh, mm-hmm. of work for sure and that was just like computer work, not to mention it probably took us two hours to shoot it. Mm. And then we go to do my shots. Okay, so here, I think we have footage of all of them. Mm. I kept, I had to do this shot where I was jumping up and kicking him. Jump up and kick him and I was like sort of hedging and I spread my legs and it, I, it was kind of sissy looking and it was not working. Mm. It looked bad on camera. I did it like four times. It didn't hurt though. It didn't hurt at all. It just didn't look good either. And we have this phrase that I just found out that my wife apparently hates. She's like, I hate when you guys say that. I was like, oh, I, didn't, oh, really? I didn't know that. She's like, huh. she's like, because you're not taking into consideration your body. Like, because we always say pain is temporary, film is forever. She's like, that's not smart. And I was like, well, I never said it was smart. I just said it was accurate. Like, <laughs> so we, that's our phrase. And I like psyched myself up and I was like, okay, I'm going to get the shot that I know I want to see. I'm going to jump as high as I can, which is not that high, but it was pretty high. I'm going to put my feet together and I'm going to kick that mat as hard as I can. And I'm just going to trust that when I come down, I'm going to come down in a way that won't hurt that bad. Yeah. We had two people holding a blue, blue mat up so he could kick it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have no stunt experience, and I've all, but I've also never been hurt doing a stunt on camera. And I've done a lot of dumb stuff on camera. I've never been seriously injured. Mm-hmm. It's always just sort of worked out. And so I think I've sort of adapted that mentality that like, ah, oh, it'll be fine. And as my chiropractor asked, he, after I did this and went to the chiropractor, he's like, how old are you? I said, 30. He goes, yeah, you're about five years past doing all your own stunts. <laughs> I was like, yeah. So yeah. I jump up, put my feet together, do the donkey kick. And then I have that stupid lanyard around my neck, which I think is honestly the major problem of the whole yeah, for sure. injury. The lanyard with my, my key fob comes around and, you know, gravity just pulls it as I'm sideways here. 
I put my arm down to try to brace myself just instinctively and my elbow crunched those keys in when I landed. And well, here's some footage of it. And then here's some footage of how I was responding immediately after it. What happened? Crunched. I think I landed. When I landed, my keys fell down like this. And then it went elbow, keys into rib. And I fell directly on my rib, on my arm, on the keys. So the keys just like mule kicked me in the ribs. Wow. I thought I was dying. <laughs> We used the actual shot. We used the actual, yeah. I only did it once. That's all we yeah. had. So I, we used that actual shot. And then as I'm like, can barely, I, the wind, I've never had the wind knocked out of me like that. It was so intense. Oh. It was so intense. And it's gotten progressively worse. Like the rib keeps popping in and out. Chiropractor visit. It's, it's nuts. And then, so you got bashed day one. Day <laughs> three, I do that. And then we got to finish. So I'm like behind the camera now at this point, he's got to shoot all his stuff. And I'm like, okay, go a little to the left. Okay, and he keeps doing all his toe touches. He jumps back to do the toe touches and mm. like lands on a, a weed or a piece of grass yeah, that was like auditioning stick. to be a knife. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was a giant. It's like those big, uh, I always forget what they're called, the big picker bushes that are super tall, not like the little tiny ones yeah. that have like stalks and it was like a dried picker bush stalk sticking straight out of the ground. Yeah. Lands straight basically on it. Basically a piece of wood. Onto, yeah, yeah, it's basically yeah. a piece of wood. I jump back onto it and cut my foot open and to, it hurt. To be fair, a lot. you ran into the picnic table yourself. Picnic table did not come at you. <laughs> I jumped true. up in the air on purpose. <laughs> we made our choices. He chose not to wear shoes. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, fit the, it fit the homie. It fit the I vibe. Know. I just do feel like shoes would have probably protected you from probably, the Probably, but it would have yeah. not looked as stupid. Maybe. It, that's true. I don't know if anyone would have even noticed you weren't wearing shoes. Though. You're probably right, but... Continuity. It, yeah. It was actually like, your shoes that my mom noticed in this sketch. It was like she noticed what? That when you're running towards him, you have your pants tucked into your socks and they're up higher, but when you're on the ground, they're like kind of around your ankles. And she like pointed it out and was like, continuity. I can't not even getting continuity. our jokes, but she notices she when we out, screw up. Yeah. When you're not wearing your socks tall enough. She, so she saw that. yeah, we're uh we're slowly figuring a lot of stuff out. I feel like this yeah. was a, a it was a fun sketch to do. Oh yeah. It was a fun sketch to do overall, and I feel like overall it it worked well. It, it served its purpose, which was a, a fun, entertaining piece at the conference. Yeah. Yep. Probably doesn't make as much sense on YouTube, but because we flashed the word subscribe at the end, I think subliminally people saw it and subscribed. <laughs> yeah. That's my theory. It's working. It's subliminal messaging. <laughs> but it was good. We all have, we three have injuries from it. I'm good. You're not committed. So she <laughs> doesn't have injuries. Other places. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, my said, foot feels totally fine. We played pickleball yesterday. I didn't have shoes on. And I didn't even notice oh, that I didn't my even foot. Think about that. Yeah, I didn't think yeah. about it either. So obviously, I've never I experienced great. pain like the pain that I, <laughs> I literally cannot sit down, can't lay down, can't get up. Anything that requires any sort of core yeah. is not just that I have no core. You That's what it was a few weeks ago. You got the worst. <laughs> it's for now sure. yeah. that when the rib pops out and it feels like there's a knife between in your back, it's the worst. So Thanks. we're figuring it out. We're uh, constantly <laughs> doing things low budget, constantly doing things probably in ways that are probably mildly dangerous by low budget he means free yeah i mean <laughs> low budget i mean zero budget i mean yeah. anything we can do for free why would we not right yeah. but we love what we're doing as filmmakers we love making films i'll, hey. I'm gonna segue into the oh, ending oh, that was like that. That was cute. we genuinely do we genuinely do thanks for sticking around with us hopefully you learned something hopefully it's applicable to your life your own creative process mm -hmm. or something that you enjoy doing if you're a filmmaker hopefully it actually encourages you get out there Make some stuff. Don't let your budget or your lack of resources uh, hold you back. Go out and hurt yourself if you have to. Sure. Pain is temporary. Yeah. Film is forever. I do love you, babe. But pain <laughs> is temporary. This will subside. And I will have the footage long past the ribs healing. So film is forever. Unless our hard drive crashes. Thanks for sticking around with us. <laughs> this has been Filmmakers Making Films. Have an awesome, have an awesome day. <laughs> Unless it's chronic pain that you cause, then yeah, that pain yeah. is actually forever. If this rib subluxation, as I have learned it is called, <laughs> oh, wow. becomes a thing where now every time I reach for a bowl of cereal, it pops my rib out of place, then pain is forever <laughs> and the film will be temporary. So subscribe.